This evening, overseas-based Guyanese fatally hit by Route 42 minibus. 1,500 traffic violations flagged on day one as e-ticketing system becomes operational. Murder-suicide investigation. Region 2 cop runs over lover with motor car. In the region, Puerto Rico struggles to reach areas cut off by Hurricane Fiona. And internationally, Nigeria battles its worst floods in years, killing hundreds. Welcome to another broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. Ranks in Region 2 are investigating a murder-suicide at a rice field in Essequibo Region 2. Earlier today, September 23rd, Commander of Regional Division 2, Superintendent Kemraj Shiv Baran, has confirmed the incident involved a police sergeant, Rory Francis, of Anna Regina Police Headquarters, and the mother of his child, 25-year-old Hannah Boston of Lima Sands. Reports said that around 9.05 a.m. today, a woman visited the police station and made a report that Sergeant Rory Francis, who was stationed at the Regional Police Division 2 in charge of the Office of Professional Responsibility, was trying to kill her daughter at Riverstown Equitable Coast. As a result, Regional Police Commanders and other ranks proceeded to the mentioned area. On arrival, Sergeant Francis' car was found in a rice field with all the windows up. Boston's motionless body was found about 10 feet away from the vehicle. A black handbag was attached to her left hand and a plastic bottle was seen next to her right hand, which is suspected to have contained a poisonous substance. Checks were made inside the motor car where Francis was discovered in the driver's seat in an inclined position in an unconscious state. He was extracted from the vehicle and taken to the Saudi Public Hospital along with Boston. It is alleged that Boston tried to escape from Francis, but he hit her with his car and ran over her before consuming a poisonous substance. The crime scene is presently cordoned off and is being processed as investigations continue. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding a fatal accident which claimed the life of an overseas-based Guyanese at the intersection of High and Princess Street, Georgetown, on Thursday, September 22nd. Dead is 53-year-old pedestrian Vida Prakash Fodder of Lombard Street, working Ross, Georgetown, who is said to have been visiting from Canada. Inquiries is closed at around 6.20 p.m. Minibus BAB 6-45, driven by 30-year-old William Scott of Supply East Bank de Marara, was proceeding south along the western drive lane of High Street at about 40-45 to 45 km per hour. The driver alleged that on approaching the intersection of Princess and High Street, he observed two pedestrians standing on the eastern side of High Street facing west. When he was in the process of passing the two pedestrians, one suddenly attempted to cross the road and in doing so ended up in the path of the minibus. As a result, the front side of the minibus collided with the pedestrian, causing him to fall onto the roadway where he received injuries about his body. The ambulance service was summoned and the 53-year-old pedestrian father was pronounced dead at the scene. The body is presently at the Memorial Gardens Funeral Home awaiting a post-mortem examination. A notice of intent prosecution was served on the driver. Further investigations are ongoing. The e-ticketing system has now become operational in Guyana. President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali made this announcement on Thursday, saying people will soon see the issuance of tickets to errant road users. The system will use cameras and other technology to monitor traffic accurately, check speeds, read license plates for Guyanese vehicles, and track with traffic violations. On the first day of testing, on Thursday, the system was able to record almost 10,000 vehicles traversing the Mandana Echoes four-lane highway with approximately 1,500 drivers committing traffic violations. The digitally obtained information will be transmitted to the Ghana Police Force and the Ghana Revenue Authority, and a traffic ticket will be issued and emailed to the driver based on the customizable parameters. The license plate recognition function entails real-time license plate collection, driver and passenger snapshots, and high-powered infrared illumination. The e-trafficking system forms part of the administration's policy to modernize and improve the lives of citizens. It is expected to improve efficiency in the drafting and dispatch of tickets, as well as the enforcement of penalties and fines. It will be operational for 24 hours and is expected to be expanded to many busy areas, removing the needs for police officers to monitor traffic and manually write tickets. The electronic ticketing system will replace written tickets and was introduced to modernize and transform the Ghana police force. 
Stick around after the break. Man fined over $4 million for smuggling chicken and New Amsterdam man sentenced and fined for trafficking in narcotics. Diana goes on show from September 16th to October 2nd for the first ever Cricket Carnival with an exciting lineup of parties, concerts, pageants, CPL Cricket semis and finals, and Carnival Costumes Parade. Book your tickets now. For more information, log on to CricketCarnival592.com or our social media pages. Come and experience our people, our food, and culture from September 16th to October 2nd. It's the first of the night. Maison Francois is the chocolate paradise of Guyana. From the moment you enter our stores, you're welcomed by the sweet aroma of Belgian chocolate, pastries, and other artisanal treats handmade by our European trained chef. However, Maison Francois is more than just chocolate. We serve lunch, dinner, afternoon tea, and even Sunday morning mimosa brunch. Our convenient location at 133 Thomas Street Kitty makes it the perfect place to take that special someone or to take home a little sweetness. Treat yourself with the taste of Paris in the heart of Georgetown. Only at Maison Francois. Good girl forget things. Oh, What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop! Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold, and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231 7878 and 223 8955. Welcome back. Richie Shaw of Padrack Poultry Depot, Magdum East Magdamarara, was ordered to pay a fine of $4,950,000 or one year imprisonment in default of payments for knowingly concealing uncustom chicken when he appeared at the Georgia Magistrates Court on September 22nd. Shaw is said to have removed the smuggled chicken from its original Rockingham packages and concealed same in black bags to evade and deceit law enforcement officers by passing same off as a local chicken. However, the Ghana Revenue Authority, with the assistance of experts from the Veterinary Public Health Unit, Ministry of Health, managed to prove the contrary to the court, which led to the said conviction. The magistrate ordered Shaw to pay the fine, which is three times the value of the goods seized. In a separate ongoing matter, officers attached to the authorities' law enforcement and investigations department on September 22nd seized in excess of 82 cases of smuggled liquor and over 62 bales of cigarettes from a property at Atlantic Gardens on the east coast of the Marara, valued in excess of 20 million Ghana dollars. 
Investigations are ongoing. The Revenue Authority, as it continues with its zero-tolerance approach against smuggling and other illegal activities, thereby allowing for a level playing field for legitimate businesses and the collection of revenue once again, encourages persons involved in such activities to cease and desist therefrom and bring themselves into compliance with the nation's taxes, trade and border law. 29-year-old Andrew Silly of Angois Avenue, New Amsterdam, was sentenced to two years, nine months imprisonment with a fine of $3.5 million for trafficking in narcotics when he appeared at the New Amsterdam Magistrates Court earlier today. Silly appeared before Magistrate Renita Singh, where he was charged with possession of over eight pounds of marijuana. Magistrate Singh stated that she is exercising her discretion in imposing a lesser sentence because Silly is a first-time offender. On Tuesday, ranks of the Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit during an operation at Patrick Dam Angois Avenue, New Amsterdam, Barbies, arrested Silly after he was found carrying a bag with suspected cannabis. Silly was arrested and escorted to Kanu headquarters with the suspected narcotics, which tested positive for cannabis with a total weight of 3.930 kg and a street value of approximately 3.5 million Ghana dollars. The Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit reminds the general public to be aware of illegal activities occurring in and around their communities and not be hesitant to report them to law enforcement. Don't go away after the break. Nigeria battles its worst floods in years, killing hundreds. And Russia protests, arrests and sold out flights as mobilization begins. When you need money and you've got to get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Maison Francois is the chocolate paradise of Guyana. From the moment you enter our stores, you are welcomed by the sweet aroma of Belgian chocolate pastries and other artisanal treats handmade by our European trained chef. However, Maison Francois is more than just chocolate. We serve lunch, dinner, afternoon tea and even Sunday morning mimosa brunch. Our convenient location at 133 Thomas Street Kitty makes it the perfect place to take that special someone or to take home a little sweetness. Treat yourself with the taste of Paris in the heart of Georgetown, only at Maison Francois. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hey, yo, GT Massive, this is Double M. All I hear me out right now is all about the Marshall Super Concert, October 1st. Right here is cricket, is carnival, is soca in Guyana. Hey, ah! Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. 
more than 1 million people still don't have electricity in Puerto Rico following Hurricane Fiona. The storm hit Puerto Rico on Sunday, causing a blackout across the island. More than 3 million people are affected, Al Jazeera's Manuel Rapado reports. On the outskirts of Puerto Rico's capital, San Juan, Victor Serrano, an electrician, is helping his neighbor repair power generator cables in the wake of Hurricane Fiona. I'd help any one of my neighbors. We're all here to help each other. With the generator cables repaired, Luis Alvarez hopes to power a few appliances in his home. After five days without electricity, success, the lights are back on, at least until the petrol powering Luis's generator runs out. I look at my situation and I think about people who don't have the economic means. How do they get by without electricity and running water? Those on the island fortunate enough to have generators are managing through the persisting blackout. But for low-income residents like Fernando and Isabel, no electricity has meant spoiled food and sleepless nights. Right now, what's coming is a heat wave, temperatures of 40 degrees, and we're already feeling it. Many here say power outages have been a problem for years, blaming an antiquated power grid and poor management by Luma, the island's power management company. Jorge Bracero, an energy sector whistleblower, says Fiona dealt a death blow to an already crumbling electricity infrastructure. I think we need a massive overhaul. We need a massive upgrades in infrastructure in the streets, but we also need a massive overhaul in our power generation. The U.S. government has promised to increase aid and assistance to Puerto Rico in the wake of Fiona. Though many seem skeptical, the help will be enough. In the island's commercial centers, it's clear that lack of electricity is having a damaging impact on the local economy. As night falls over San Juan, the sounds of power generators echo through the streets. And the question on everyone's mind is how much longer will it be before power is fully restored on the island? Manuel Rapalo, Al Jazeera, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Internationally, more than 300 people have died and 100,000 others have been displaced in the worst floods to hit Nigeria in 10 years. This is according to the National Emergency Management Agency, Al Jazeera's Ahmad Idris Rup. Highways have become waterways. The only hospital within a 35-kilometer radius is partially submerged. Even the dead here can't rest in peace. Beneath these murky waters, residents say lies the community graveyard. Mohammed Wanwe's family was hit hard. The water tore through my compound and brought down the entire house. Three of my children died, two are in hospital. Residents say these year's floods are the worst in more than half a century. The country's emergency agency says more than half a million people have been affected. Officials here say huge swathes of Jigawa State are underwater, including 20,000 hectares of rice paddies and cornfields. In addition to immediate concerns about destroyed livelihoods and incomes, there are fears of food shortages before the next planting season. Government buildings are now housing thousands of displaced people. Conditions here are desperate. With many people still unreachable, officials struggle to deliver aid. In fact, the devastation is beyond the resources of the state. As, as president, what we can only offer is we offer feedings, we offer beddings, and some part of uh, mats for sleeping and mattresses, and medical care, and maybe toilet facilities in the, in the camps and water facilities. Nigeria's Emergency Management Agency says nearly all of the country's 36 states have been affected by this year's floods. With dams still bursting their banks and rains still in focus, the worst may not be over for Nigerians living in riverine and coastal communities. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Jigawa.
And finally, Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered a partial mobilization of reservists to bluster his forces in Ukraine, an unpopular move that sparked rare protests across the country and led to some 1,300 arrests. Al Jazeera's Bernard Smith reports. There's not much time to say goodbye here in Saka, Russia's Far East. Most of these men had only 24 hours notice that they were being drafted into Russia's army. There's some of the 300,000 reservists being called up to fight in Ukraine. Not everyone is going willingly. In Dagestan, Russia's southernmost tip, reservists confront a woman at the military commission. What's it for this war, this man shouts. Let Putin protect his own palaces, not hide behind our men and children. There are still a few who summon the courage to protest against President Vladimir Putin's announcement of a partial mobilization of civilians. This was in St. Petersburg. My boyfriend received today a notification from military commissariat, so he couldn't come out here. But I came because I don't want our young men to be taken away. We came to protect our friends, our fathers and our relatives, who they want to take to the war, the brutal war against Ukraine. One monitoring group says at least 1,300 people have been detained in 38 cities. Most Russians get their news from state TV, and more than 70% of them definitely or mostly support what Putin calls a special military operation in Ukraine. That's according to a poll by an independent Russian organization before the draft was announced. The European Commission says more than half a million Russians have left the country since the invasion began in February. This was the border with Georgia on Wednesday. Finland has also seen a spike in arrivals. The only remaining direct flights to European cities are to Istanbul and Belgrade. They're sold out. The war is horrible, so uh, it's okay to be afraid of war and of death and uh, of such things. But those men who are eligible for military service will not be allowed to leave Russia. They will have to stay and fight. And they don't know when they'll see their families again. Bernard Smith, Al Jazeera. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3 weather forecast. for this edition of Channel 2's Headline News Update. Tune in on Monday at 7pm for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other and do have a wonderful weekend.